more frequently? How do we pick winning deals versus losing deals? Because you know, maybe we only win two thirds of the deals that we bid on. Uh, so two thirds of our time is wasted. How do we f spend more of our time, you know, focusing on those winners and getting into that sweet spot? And as I reflected on this video, I, th I thought about a time, you know, quite a few years ago now, where I was selling um, fairly significant multi-million dollar change programs to Fortune 500 companies, and you know, I couldn't, I couldn't fail. Every time I bid, we we won, and it was a, a huge success. And somebody uh, once said to me, she said, well, I, I, "How are you doing this? Why do you why do you win all the time? You never lose." And it caused me to sit back a little bit, and there were really two things. Number one, belief system. We'll save that for another video. But the most important thing was I only, I only bid on the ones I thought I could win. Um, and, and they fell into that sweet spot. And, you know, you, you, you smell, you smell those deals. You know that it's going to be in your ballpark and you've got a great chance. So what I'm going to do today is going to give you a little technique to start to, you know, identify uh, those, those winning deals. And so if you think about your prospecting universe, you know, there are, there are plenty of people that you can go and sell to. So if you're a commercial flooring company, lots of people need floors. I mean, the market is, is wide open. So where are you going to spend your time? And we're going to use a little, a, a little diagram, a Venn diagram. Yeah, I've often wondered, who's this guy Venn? He sounds Dutch, but he's bloody clever because he came up with this diagram and the diagram is really, really powerful. So we'll take a look at it. So I want you to think about what is it that you do really, really well, right? And just think, just think about that. So you might be a, you know, a flooring company and you might be focused on really corporate environments so and looking for that professional look that has multiple materials, lots of transitions, lots of complexity and requires technical excellence to deliver that job. That might be what you do really well. Then you've got to think about what are your competitors doing? Where are they strong? Um, and, and they may have different different strengths to you. But ultimately, we want to know, you know, what we want to know our customer. What does the customer really, really want? What are they prepared to pay a lot of money for? Because there'll be some things that are table stakes. We need these things. But then there are critical things that are absolutely, um, you know, showstoppers for them that you need to be really, really focused on. So here's where we don't want to be. This is, this is, don't be spending, because this serves as a map to tell us where we can compete. So where you don't want to be is in this dumb zone. So you can see that you and your competitor do it equally well. It's in your sweet spot, but the customer, it's not really important to the customer. They don't really want to pay a lot of money for that. So what happens is you and your competitor duke it out and you know you get lower and lower and in, in, in you win it on a really really low price and you remember our phrase revenue is vanity profit is sanity and cash is king so vanity's happy we got some additional revenue but sanity he, he's pulling his hair out because the margin is so poor that you know he can't really make any money so don't compete you know head to head with your competitor on something the customer doesn't really want similarly in this red zone, that's the losing zone, right? Your competitor does it better than you. It's really important to the customer, so the customer's prepared to pay more for it, so you probably get a higher margin on that job. But let's say, let's say this, is a, this is a mass carpet insulation, lots and lots of floors laying carpet, and your competitor you know, has you know, installers that do that really quickly, really effectively, really cheaply. And you've built this machine that does technical, complex, in multiple transition kinds of environments. You have to pay more for your installers, They're, right? So, so you, you, you can't compete there. You're going you're gonna to lose. So don't even, even go there. It might seem attractive. The margins might seem good, but you're just not going to win that often. Now, here's the tricky zone. I call it the risky zone because the customer's prepared to pay for it. It's really, really important. They're going to pay money, a lot of money for it. Um, but you and you, both you and your competitor do it equally well. So you, you, need, you need different strategies to win here. You either win with an innovative way of getting the work done or a different material that you could substitute, or you win on emotion. You win the emotional sale. And you remember in an earlier video, I talked about don't talk to the monkey when you should be talking to the organ grinder. 
meaning is a metaphor for get to the decision maker. Now, if you have a relationship with the decision maker, you may be able to edge out your competition based upon that emotional sale and relationship. Um, or, you know, you win with speed. You get in, you bid, you go fast, in and out before your competitor knows about it. But do know that do know the stakes when you're competing in that zone. Be honest, be honest with yourself. But you know where the treasure lies, where all the money is, where you're going to win more often than not, is the green zone. That's where you do things better than your competitors. The customers really pay, prepared to pay a lot of money for it, right? Um, so in, the, in our example, this would be that complex corporate environment with multiple transitions and finishes and materials. I mean, think about it this way. It's like walking into a... A, a, a bathroom in the Ritz, everything's perfect. Or you walk into a public bathroom, yeah, and the floor's not laid correctly and it tilts one way and the water pulls in a corner and it gets wet and it builds up mold and it gets a bit stinky and smelly. That's the difference, right? So you want to be in that environment where everything's got a pr pristine level, the transitions. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, 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 a a painting, it's absolutely magnificent. That's where you win. That's where you need to compete because your competitors can't do it. So that's where you want to be. So what I'd like you to do is to think about those three circles and what you do really, really well. And one way of doing it is to look at your portfolio of successes in the past, you know, which customers have given you the highest margin for your work. And, you know, where have you done really, really well? And it will start to give you some clues of the segments of the market, the types of customer, the type of materials, uh, the, the, the complexity of the job as to where you win. Now, once you've got that picture, look at those customers and then go find those customers. Go market to those customers. Go talk, it to, talk to those customers because that's where you're going to win. That's where you're going to win big. And that's where you're going to make a lot of money because you're going to command higher margins. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Please leave any comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And you can also find more of my videos on sales and business improvement on my YouTube channel. And you'll find me at Mick Holly. If you search for Mick Holly or Business by the Numbers, uh, there are plenty of others on sales and business improvement. So I hope you enjoy those and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.